and we are on. We say all praises be to the creator, all power to his people. In the name of Yahshua, the black revolutionary Messiah, I greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the spirit of truth and the words of peace. Shalom Aleichem. Give a special salute to the black messiahs. Our motto is stop waiting for a savior and be one. Stop waiting for a savior and be one. Tonight on the Black History Month Eve 2022, we're going to deal with what's happening in North Carolina. We're going to deal with the conspiracy to destroy Black history, education in North Carolina. As some of you might remember, last year, a year ago this month, Politicians got together, and once again, they tried to do it years before, but once again, they have tried to put forth a Holocaust education bill and make that a law. Now, what this would do, it will make it mandatory for your children to learn about the Holocaust, to learn about the evil that. Adolf Hitler did. So what problems could anybody have with that? The issue was last year, activists, African-American lawmakers, and there was even an native, a Native American lawmaker who wanted the bill to be more inclusive. Of course, the African-American lawmakers and activists said, how can you have make Holocaust education mandatory and neglect to make black history mandatory? The Native American representative he posed the same argument for the indigenous people of this country. He said, how can you talk about the Holocaust, the extermination of Jewish people without talking about the extermination of indigenous people in this country? So it went before the education committee and some bold lawmakers, representatives, raised the issue, but it was defeated. It was defeated, but it wasn't unanimous. It wasn't unanimous. A lot of people did not want that bill because it did not include slavery. It did not include the Black Holocaust. It did not include indigenous people or Native Americans. So it went through another committee and that was even tighter than the vote. Um, one of the votes, I think it was the last one in the North Carolina House, they didn't count the people. They just took a yay or nay vote. And even the reporters, themselves talked about how close the vote was. The reporters talked about how close the vote was. That was the first red flag. If you're having a vote and it's supposed to be on the table as important as the education of our children, why are you gonna take a yeah or nay vote? Now, personally, I listened to it and I couldn't hear the difference. I couldn't tell what, who, who voted for what. But they said that those who were proponents of the Holocaust education bill, they said they won the vote. That was the first red flag. 
So we continue to, because once it passes the House, it has to go to the Senate. And once it passes the Senate, the governor has to sign it into law. So we were organizing and we were contacting our senators to demand that black history is added to this bill. So the bill died. The bill never made it through the Senate. It never made it to the Senate floor. So there was no opportunity. There was no opportunity for people to vote, to actually have a vote, yay or nay. So the bill died. And if you remember that special that used to come on Saturday morning, I'm just a bill, yes, I'm only a bill. You know the steps that it takes for a bill to become law. But this particular bill died before it went to the Senate floor. Now, last November, that many of us did not find out until four days ago. But last November, they passed the North Carolina budget. They passed the North Carolina budget. And the North Carolina budget is 800 pages long. Buried on page 100 and something, buried on page 100 or something, was the Holocaust bill. So when they passed the budget to give people raises and to keep the government going, they snuck that bill, Holocaust bill in there. It's the Gazillia Aberson Holocaust Education Act. They snuck that in there so it would pass along with the budget. See, that's how they averted, subverted discussing black history. That's how they got over discussing black history. They just embedded it in the budget. So when the budget passed, when the budget passed, it automatically passed. But many of us didn't, still don't know about it. But on January 27th, which is Holocaust Remembrance Day, it started hitting the news about how the bill had become law. How the bill had become law. But I ask you, how do does something become law just because it's funded in the budget. That's another red flag. How does something become law just because it's funded in the budget? Law is law. If you're saying it's mandatory for children to learn something, if it's mandatory, that's a law. But they skip past the law part, embedded it in the budget, and made it law. Now, this is what's really disturbing. This is how they did it. ABC 11 reported on Thursday, January 27th, they ran the story. In Raleigh, state lawmakers made a big push to make Holocaust and genocide education a mandated curriculum back in 2019. The Gazella, Gazella Aberson Holocaust Education Act passed the House 112 to zero. The bill, however, never made it to the Senate floor. So proponents negotiated to get it attached to the omnibus state budget proposal to give it its best shot at becoming law. The $24 billion budget bill, however, became mired in unrelated political devices over health care and teacher pay, leading to a, a 
a veto from Democratic budget, uh, Democratic Governor Roy Cooper in 2020. Fast forward to 2021, lawmakers negotiated a compromise budget that was signed by Governor Cooper. The deal included the Gazillia Abenson Act, it marked at $350,000 in current physical year 2021 to 2022 and $450,000 in fiscal year 2022 to 2023 for implement of the new requirements. I want to pull out one thing right now. The bill never made it into the Senate floor, so proponents negotiated to get it attached to the state budget. They negotiated to get it attached to the state budget. So they already knew it was going to pass anyway because it said conspiracy, they negotiated to get it into the state budget to give it the best chance of becoming law. It was a negotiation, a compromise, a conspiracy. And once again, the way they did it, they knew people were raising the question, what about Black history? And some people say, well, what about Indigenous or Native American history being included in that bill? So to subvert that, not only did they take change the wording. Some news reports are saying that they also refined the definition of Holocaust. See, some of us were raising the question, if you're talking about the Holocaust or Holocaust and genocide, wouldn't that include Black folks and Native American folks. So they redefined their definition to exclude everybody. They excluded Native Americans and they excluded African Americans. They excluded. They made it clear we ain't talking about y'all. This is our bill. See what they do is everybody wants to be allies with black people when we're fighting. But when it comes to their wants versus our wants, they drop black folks like a hot, like a hot potato. Look at what they did with affirmative action. They would brag that they marched with Dr. Martin Luther King. They would brag that they uh, stood up for civil rights, but when it came down to affirmative action that was going to affect their pocketbooks, we were no longer allies. They get what they get from our struggle, and once they get what they need, they drop us. That's history. That's history. So the same thing happened with the Holocaust Education Bill. So it's law now. It's law now. It's law that your child... Now, and let me back up. What's also disturbing is that this happened when you have politicians talking about, we don't want anti-racism education. We don't want critical race theory being taught. They are going to school boards intimidating school board meetings all over the country, all over the state, saying how they don't want critical race theory, how they don't want anti-racism education, how they don't want their children learning that. But those same people endorsed the Holocaust bill. You didn't see those people standing in front of school board meetings talking about they didn't want the Holocaust bill because it would make German children or children of German descent feel guilty. But when it came to black people, they wanted to fight against it. They want to bum rush school boards against it. Though that, that's a clear indication. That's a clear indication 
that it was never about anti-racism. It was never about critical race theory. It was always about not teaching black history, not teaching black history. That's what it was all the way about from the beginning because if it was truly about critical race theory, if it was truly about not teaching anti-racism, they would have opposed the Holocaust bill the same way they opposed black history. It's a double standard. It's a double standard. It's color bias. But they are depending on us not to say anything about it. They are depending on the news not covering our opposition. They are depending on people just, well, that's just the way it is, and walking away. But this is what we have to do. We have to send emails out to the media. We have to send emails out, mass emails out, to Catherine Truitt, who is the superintendent of North Carolina schools. We have to send emails out to the North Carolina Board of Education, and they actually meet this Thursday. So we have to bombard them with emails, let them know we will not take this disrespect during Black History Month or any time, but especially during Black History Month. So we got to stand up, brothers and sisters. We got to let our voices be heard. Share this video. Share this video. And if you want the contact information, call or text me, 919-972-8305. 919-972-8305. And leave your well, the email address, and I will, or text your email address, and I will send you the email addresses of who you need to get in contact with. We can't take this sitting down. This is, we're headed towards the midterm elections. We're headed towards the midterm election, election season. Your politicians in your city who are running for state, for the state house. Tell them, ask them how they feel. Those the same people who are going to be knocking at your door trying to get you to vote, trying to say that black people are being disenfranchised. Ask them about us being disenfranchised with black history not being included in the Holocaust bill. When they come knocking at your door, wanting you to vote and talking about how black people need to vote because they're being disfranchised, the best example of us being disfranchised is when they approve, they pass the Holocaust bill into law without it going through the proper channel. If that isn't disenfranchisement, I don't know what is. Also, the media tomorrow, begin tomorrow, everybody's going to be talking about Black history, how we need to celebrate famous Black Americans. Raise the issue. Every opportunity you get, every time you see the media or anybody posting about Black history, talk about how Holocaust history is man mandatory in the school system, but Black history is not. Raise that contradiction all month long. Every time you get a chance, every time you see somebody talking about Black history, how we need to celebrate Black history, ask them why is Holocaust history mandatory and Black history is not. Why wasn't, if Black history, if you love Black history so much, why wasn't it included in a bill that would have made it mandatory to teach in public schools? So we got to fight, brothers and sisters. 
because again, they're depending on us not saying anything. They're depending on it just going away. But we got to fight like never before for the future of our children. As always, we leave with the Black Messiah motto, stop waiting for a savior and be one. Shalom.